Hello, my name is Christopher Renstrom, and I want to welcome you to my weekly horoscope forecast for April 8th to April 14th, 2024. Now, the big celestial event of the week is the visible solar eclipse, which is taking place in the astrological sign of Aries on April 8th. This is an extraordinary event for those of us here in North America, as we will be able to see the eclipse with our eyes in the sky. Or actually, we really shouldn't be looking at the eclipse with our eyes in the sky. We should be outfitting ourselves with our solar eclipse glasses so that we can view the eclipse with no harm to our eyes. In any case, the visible solar eclipse will be taking place in the zodiac sign of Aries. And what this will do when the moon moves in front of the sun and blocks its light for all of us underneath, what this will do is release a very powerful surge of Aries energy into everyone's horoscopes. So, solar eclipses, what are they about and how were they regarded in astrology? Solar eclipses were basically regarded as spelling trouble, usually to monarchs and to people in high public office. In ancient times, when the moon moved in front of the sun and blocked its rays and caused day to turn into night, this, as you can imagine, frightened everyone who witnessed it. Uh, people either would grab cans and spoons and begin banging so as to ward away the evil spirits that were being launched or released by the moon coming in front of the sun's rays, or they fell upon their knees and they prayed for forgiveness. It's like whenever you go through a crisis in your life or a very frightening moment in your life, you may say, oh, this is really frightening, and I promise to give up cigarettes or be a better person or donate more generously to charities if only you, God, will get me out of this mess. Well, that was the same idea that people experienced during a solar eclipse. The sun was disappearing from the sky with no assurances that it was going to come back. And so they fell upon their knees and they prayed to the sun and repented and said they would do whatever they would need to do for the sun to come back out of the darkness, for the sun to reappear in the sky. And when it did, they all breathed an enormous sigh of relief and planned to make good on their different vows and pledges. Well, things have changed a bit since ancient times, and instead of prompting repentance uh, nationwide, a solar eclipse these days is regarded by astrologers as being consciousness-raising. This is the period of time that astrologers will often recommend to people that you want to sort of take stock of what's going on in your life. And you essentially want to ask yourself one question, which is, do you feel like you're on the right path? Do you feel like you're on the right path to becoming the best person that you could possibly be? A solar eclipse really gives you an opportunity to see if you are on the right path or not in your life. And so when this solar eclipse takes place on April 8th, what you'll probably come to see right away is whether you feel like you're maybe a little bit off your path, you know, maybe, you know, a couple of missteps, but you could quickly correct your course and find your way again in your life. Or are you going to discover that you are wildly off course and that you could use some help in finding your way back to the path, the life path that is right for you? Now, if you were born under the zodiac sign of Aries, this solar eclipse in your very own sign should herald a dramatic departure. And normally it would, except for the fact that you might find yourself fumbling to retie your shoelaces at the starting gate. So in other words, this great start or this great beginning that you were anticipating doesn't look like it's going to go off that easily. Why? Because Mercury is currently retrograde in your own zodiac sign. So Mercury moving backwards in the zodiac sign of Aries may bring a false beginning or a misplaced step, something in which you may trip and fumble rather than race forward. Now, your reaction to this as being in Aries might be extreme frustration with yourself. It might be along the lines of, how could I have blown it? How could I have mistook the signals? What this solar eclipse is asking you to do in this moment of urgency 
and in this moment of, of great frustration, perhaps with yourself, is to stop, look, and listen. What happens with the solar eclipse is that all of the aspects of the zodiac sign of Aries are, as I said, released into everyone's horoscopes. And being in Aries, you're going to feel like things are even more urgent. Uh, things have to be done right now. And this is going to be very, very powerful. The stumble at the starting gate might have raised the question, are you as prepared as you think you are? And so is it better for you to act urgently in the moment? Or is it better for you to maybe back off and to ask yourself, are you as together as you could possibly be? Taking time out to reflect, taking time out to prepare yourself for a next dramatic step, that during this period of time would be well advised. Now, if you're born under the zodiac sign of Taurus, you've probably been responding to this eclipse energy for the past two weeks. You might have found yourself kind of putting people's noses out of joint in your insistence that what you think should be done should be done right now. Taurus, you might be very much inspired by this, uh, you know what, you have to strike while the iron's hot. You know, this kind of Aries urgency is moving through you. And if you're going to uh, strike when the iron's hot, then you want to keep on striking until you have prevailed, uh, until you have sold that person you wanted to sell uh, something on or made that deal. So there might have been this kind of pushiness, this sort of bulldozing quality that can appear uh, in the zodiac sign of Taurus. Now would be a good time to cool it, all right? especially with the uh, Aries energy, uh, that Aries urgency surging so powerfully forward, now would be a good time to cool it. You know, if you're trying to get someone to agree to a sale or to sign on the line that's dotted um, or to take you on for a project, you don't want to keep pushing them back up into a corner, especially if you're born under Taurus. Taurus is ruled by the planet Venus. And so Venus is much more congenial in the way that it approaches matters. So if you feel like people are responding to you a little bit like you're being a little bit, you know, too aggressive, take that social cue, back off a little bit. And maybe what you want to do if you're trying to sell to someone or negotiate with someone, maybe what you want to do in the couple of days after this solar eclipse is back off not get on the phone every day, not ask how things are going or have they signed yet? You know, sort of back off and let the person that you're trying to persuade have their time alone to process. Because what you want to watch out for is in you trying to achieve your aim, you may be alienating support. And that is not something that a Venus sign wants to do. Bear in mind that on April 10th, Mars, the ruler of the eclipse, is conjunct Saturn. And so the more that you push, the more other people might back away or maybe even kind of like push back. So what you want to do is take a couple of uh, days to sort of tap back into that cool, relaxed uh, Taurus energy, let people decide if they want to work with you or not. And then when you talk to them again, take a much more relaxed approach. This people will find much more welcoming and appealing. Now, if you were Gemini, not only do you have to contend with this surge of Aries energy that makes everything so urgent and has to be taken care of immediately, but your ruling planet Mercury is also retrograde still in the zodiac sign of Aries. And then this will also reference us to the ruler of Aries, which is Mars, which will be forming a conjunction to Saturn in Pisces on April 10th. What it's saying is that the whole point of timing relies on your ability to read the room and to choose the right moment to act. If you feel like you're being pushed forward by a sense of urgency and compulsion and frustration, and that you have to like make decisions now and th that you need to push your agenda right away or you're going to lose out, then this is the time for you to cool it. This week is not the right moment to act. So if there's a decision you have to make, if there's something that you need to present, if there's something that you need to approve or to sign off on, this is not the week to do it. It's not the week to do it. 
not when there is a solar eclipse that's taking place in the sky, not when your ruling planet Mercury is moving backwards in the sky, and not when Mars is forming a conjunction to Saturn in the zodiac sign of Pisces, which happens to be squaring, creating a difficult and problematic relationship to you being born under the sign of Gemini. In fact, there is such a confluence of contrary energies that any decision you make or that any action you take is unsustainable. What I would strongly advise is to wait until April 25th when your ruling planet Mercury comes out of retrograde. What you are going to discover between now and then is that many minds will have changed and that many people who were in the lead will have lost it by then. Now, if you were born under Cancer, this eclipse is going to affect you, regardless of zodiac sign. Why is it going to affect you? Because eclipses always involve the sun and moon. The sun and moon are called the luminaries in astrology. And as you probably already know, the moon is your ruling planet. So, because the moon is involved in this solar eclipse, it's going to impact you. And how is it going to impact you? There may very well be a surprise dismissal or a surprise departure of someone who had been in a superior position. Maybe they were a manager. Uh, maybe they were a supervisor. Maybe they were the CEO. In any case, there may be a surprise departure or a, a surprise dismissal of this person that may affect you either directly or in the chain of command. What's going to happen is that you may find yourself suddenly looking at an open, coveted position that other people want just as much as you do. And so again, with this Aries energy that's pushing you forward, there's going to be this feeling of go for it, sir, go for it, and take out those sharp elbows and take out anyone who's going to compete with you for this place. But Cancer, if you take a moment to reflect, are you really that type of an impulsive person? Are you really that sort of person that's going to make a grab no matter what? No. Cancers traditionally, usually, will actually stay a little bit away from that type of a situation where everyone else is beginning to move forward and they're going to compete and get into a wrangle over this coveted position. A cancer might actually move back or move away from the situation. That's because cancers like to study. Cancers like to assess. Cancers like to really ask themselves, what's the fit? What's the feel? What's the feasibility of my taking over a position like this? Do I like it? Sure, I like it. But how am I going to live with this? How is this going to impact my life? And so cancers need time to study a situation before they go ahead and pursue it. And as we all know, cancers never pursue things directly. They pursue things indirectly. So take this time, Mercury's retrograde. Take this time, Mars is conjunct Saturn in the zodiac sign of Pisces. Take this time to not join in the big uh, rush towards that position and to compete with everyone else. Take this time to remember that you have a wonderful track record, that people know exactly who you are, and I want you to trust in that because whoever gets this position of manager or of supervisor or of even CEO, there's going to be a process and cancers are very good at that process. So let everyone else, you know, go and, and, and try to make a grab for something that you already know is going to be seen uh, as being open to a number of candidates. Work on making yourself as prepared and ready for that interview or for that audition. And if you do decide to go for this position, chances are you will be the one who's walking away with it. Now, the big question for Leos this week is, are you really going to walk out on everything you've built in order to blaze a new trail? It could happen. Aries has never been known to back away from a challenge. And with so much Aries energy coursing through your horoscope this week, you'll be feeling that, that you don't want to back away from the challenge, that you want to try something new. But Leos can also be a bit risk averse. That doesn't mean you won't take a risk. You will. 
but yours tend to be more calculated risks. There's your reputation to think of. There's your brand. There's how you're going to come across and how you're going to look if you make this type of a situation. But like I said, you're open to something different. Now, it's been a long time, Leo, since you felt so pioneering, since you felt like it was time to try something new, time to try something different. And you might find yourself asking the question, if not now, when? This is the perfect headspace to be in with moving forward with any sort of new path that opens up for you this week. I want you to know, Leo, that you are so accomplished in being who you are. You are so accomplished in what you do that you can try something different, all right? You can try something different knowing that you could always go back to what you were doing before if it doesn't work out. All right, that's because you are a valuable player. If, if things don't work out, you can always go back to what you were doing before. But, but if things do work out and the doors do open and you cross the threshold into something new and different, well then, you will have yourself to thank for having been so bold and courageous at the right moment to make the changes that you've been longing to make. Now let's talk about Virgos. Virgo, this might be a bit of a distressing week for you. Not because everything's going to be thrown into chaos or anything along those lines. Virgos rather thrive in chaos because it means that you get to salvage the situation and put things back together again. No, the reason this week might be a very distressing week for you is because you may see someone who's always been the epitome of self-control. You may see someone who has their act together, suddenly lose it. All of a sudden, this very well-composed person, this person that everyone has relied on for calling the shots and making wonderful judgments, loses it. Maybe they sat on their prerogative too long. You know, they, they had the prerogative to exercise in a certain situation and they sat on it too long and now it's no longer the trump card that it was. Or maybe, maybe that, they were on the verge of making a decision or, or giving a direction, and they got cold feet, and they, and they suddenly backed away from it. What will happen as a result is the opportunity will pass. They will lose out on something that should have been an easy gain for them. And you, you will be witness to this, and this could leave you very uncomfortable and very much distressed. It's always unsettling to see someone that we look up to stumble. It's always unsettling when we see someone that we rely upon fail in some sort of regard. But it's a good reminder. It's not a reminder of humility. Um, I mean, it can be a humbling experience, and this is indeed what you're witnessing. But what the reminder is, is that even people who are experts, even people who have their act together, even people who are well-composed, are fallible. Everyone on this planet is fallible. And so a lot of energy can go into doing it the right way. A lot of energy can go into being safe. And you may find yourself asking the question, if this could happen to that person, what's to say that it couldn't happen to me? You don't create your own masterpiece by coloring inside the lines. In other words, if you're always doing things the right way that they should be done, you're not really going to progress any further than someone who does things correctly and someone who does them uniformly and someone who does them the same way from one day to the other. You have to be able to make mistakes. You have to be able to lose it. Uh, you have to be able to even fail. Now, again, this isn't to teach you that, you know, um, being a perfectionist is, is, a, is a fallacy, you know, it's an illusion. No, what it does is that it teaches you that you can fail and you will survive it, that you can stumble and that you will get back up again. Let yourself see when this person fails. Let yourself see when this person stumbles or blunders that they have made a mistake. And ask yourself, what is your relationship 
to mistakes. Would it be along the lines of, well, I would never have made a mistake like that. I would never have been so sloppy. I would never have let my guard down. I would have never have waited that long. Or could your relationship to mistakes be mistakes are perhaps stepping stones rather than setbacks? If you can let yourself see that mistakes are stepping stones, not setbacks, that mistakes are learning moments, not failures, then you will accrue the courage and the wisdom to make the progress that you long to make. Now for Libra, this solar eclipse is going to affect your partnership, whether it's a romantic partnership, a career partnership, or a creative collaboration. Now you may be saying, God, not partnerships again. Why is it always partnerships? Why, it's a, why is it always relationships? There's more to being a Libra than that. Now, the reason why this eclipse is affecting partnerships, relationships, alliances, and associations is because the eclipse is taking place in your opposite sign of Aries. This is the sign that sits opposite you on the seesaw. And so with this eclipse taking place here, this deals with someone that you are partnered with. Now, for some of you Libras, this might be a very difficult time in terms of your relationship in that someone may suddenly disappear or leave the relationship altogether. An eclipse is about blocking the light from the sky. And so that could manifest itself in terms of your relationship or business partnership or creative collaboration. Another question you may be asking as a Libra, um, if you're involved in a relationship, uh, Libra is often connected or associated uh, with the seventh house in astrology, which is the seventh house of partnership and of open enemies. So as a Libra, you might be asking a question, has my partner become an open enemy? It might be a little bit hard to distinguish between the two. And so this would be a time for you to really examine the future and the stability of the relationship itself. This eclipse may change your perspective. Uh, for instance, you may go from someone who is very concerned and anxious about someone leaving to taking on the attitude of like, okay, it looks like this person's leaving, so I need to take action steps to resolving that situation. Or you might find yourself involved in a partnership in which someone is very miserable in terms of their, this partnership. Maybe they don't feel like they're your equal or they don't want to be there or they, they aren't as committed to the creative collaboration as they once were. And they may be doing all these things to signal that they don't want to be there, but they feel unable to make the choice themselves. This eclipse may put you in a situation where you need to make that choice for someone who cannot make it for themselves. So either the eclipse is going to make you very resolute about moving forward with the relationship. If a relationship is not doing well, resolute on perhaps ending it or resolute on making the decision that someone else that you are involved with doesn't seem or sound like they are going to be able to make. Now, if you cut ties, which is very much something that could be taking place during this period, I would advise you doing it from a generous place. In other words, the other person is having a hard time. Chances are the other person is having a harder time than you are with this. And so I want you to sort of come from a very centered and a very empowered place and to work out a situation in which they can leave. Uh, maybe you might have to bear the brunt of the transition or maybe even a cost. And part of you might be like, well, why do I have to do that? But it looks to me like you're in a situation where you can do that. Or if you're not in that situation yet, you will be when Jupiter moves into the zodiac sign of Gemini. In any case, you never want to be keeping someone involved in a relationship or an association who doesn't want to be there. And this is exhausting you and taking a lot of energy out of you. And because you've arrived on the other end of your process and you're ready to go on forward, do what you can, even if it feels like you have to be the one who cuts their losses, do what you can to bring this association to an end and hopefully to part in a more positive manner. 
you will see this come back and reward you in the months ahead. Now, if you're a Scorpio, you might be feeling a bit stifled right now. That's because of the Mars-Saturn conjunction taking place on April 10th. Mars, as you might recall, is your traditional ruling planet. Now, Mars is very much a pedal-to-the-metal type of planet. It wants to push on that accelerator and speed forward and get what it wants to get. Saturn, on the other hand, is a ride-the-brake type of planet kind of like, oh, looking around for the policeman on the freeway and realizing it went like a couple of miles faster than the speed limit. Um, and so it should really bring it back. And so Saturn rides the brake. So Mars pushes the pedal to the metal and Saturn rides the brake. When you have the two of them in the same place in the sky at the same time, you could imagine what that's going to be. So yes, you're feeling stifled. Yes, you're feeling frustrated. Yes, you're feeling like, just move forward already or backwards, whatever, just make a decision. All right, so you're going to very much feel that conjunction in this corner of your horoscope. And then, of course, what we have to add to this is the sense of urgency, which is coming from areas which is like, move forward, move forward. You know, so this is all going in you right now. So you might be wrestling with a decision. You might be wrestling with a dilemma. You might really be wrestling with your conscience over whether you want to stay or leave a situation that you are faced with. But what you want to do during a period of time like this is to look at things dispassionately. And believe it or not, Scorpio is capable of looking at things dispassionately. And what you want to do is review your situation dispassionately, and then you want to ask yourself a tough question. Are people holding you back? or? Are you allowing people to hold you back? This is a big question for you, Scorpio, this week, because you may be feeling very guilty if you were to leave someone in the lurch. You may be feeling very guilty if you don't continue to be this protective presence or this person of support. You may feel that if you weren't there for this person, this person wouldn't make it. Or if you weren't there for a situation, the situation wouldn't make it. But you need to really examine whether that is good for you or not. It's strange facing a kind of selfish question at a time like this, but Scorpios are not selfish in this way emotionally. They will bind themselves to someone out of loyalty. And perhaps what the friction, what the frustration is talking about with this Mars-Saturn conjunction being pushed by the uh, solar eclipse in, in Aries energy, is that that fiery energy may be pushing you to put yourself forward or ahead of a situation, uh, even if it feels like you are abandoning it or letting the other person down, because perhaps the time has come for you to truly put yourself first which is something that Aries knows all about. This is going to be a curiously frustrating week for Sagittarius. On one hand, when you look at the eclipse in terms of trines, this should be a wonderful week for Sagittarius. You know, uh, Aries is a fire sign just like Sagittarius is. It's forming a trine to your own zodiac sign. So this push forward is coming through your horoscope with a very strong force. And this could be a very exciting and it should be a very exhilarating time for you. And it may very well be. You may uh, achieve certain accomplishments. Uh, you may get certain prizes and you may make significant headway in a path or a course that you have chosen for yourself. The problem that you're going to run into is that Mars-Saturn conjunction in the zodiac sign of Pisces. Why? Pisces is a sign that's ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter rules both Pisces and your own zodiac sign, Sagittarius. So Pisces is ruled by Jupiter, your own ruling planet, and Pisces squares or forms a difficult or challenging relationship to your own zodiac sign. So on one hand, you have this tremendous push forward, which is coming from the solar eclipse in Aries. You're feeling this 
bravado. You're feeling this audacity. You know, you're feeling maybe uh, this triumph, you know, definitely if you're feeling confidence, but you may be even feeling triumphant. But at the same time, there's something going on in your personal life that looks to me like it's causing you trouble. And it looks like it has to do with a loved one or a family member. For some time now, perhaps weeks, you have been trying to get this person to see the bright side of a situation, or you've been trying to get this person out of their funk, or you've been trying to be uplifting in that way that Sagittarians are. And for all of your uplift, the more that this person resists. What's also very galling or very frustrating for you is that you see someone that you love and care about really making things harder on themselves than need be. You know, not only are they taking a gloomier view of matters, but they're making these kind of like dumb decisions or they're choosing priorities that make something harder rather than easier to do. And you have tried your damnedest. You have tried your best to try to turn this person around and they either agree in the moment, but then they don't do it or they just remain resistant to you. And this honestly could be one of those moments where you just want to throw up your hands and say, okay, no, do it your way. Actually, you've probably done that already several times, but you keep coming back because this is someone you love and this is someone you care for. So there's a wonderful phrase that I love, um, and it's one that you may want to uh, hold close to your heart this week, which is, People need love most when they deserve it the least. Now, that isn't to say that your loved one is undeserving. Uh, I would imagine that the situation is more like they feel like they're undeserving. Um, and you may be very frustrated and even angry at them that they're not listening to you or letting you be a good lover or letting you be a good family member or letting you be a good friend, you know, that they that they keep seeing, you know, that things are a failure, what you want to do is that you want to be that lighthouse of love. You don't have to sort of like take them out for a fun time, you know, to divert them. You want to just be with them within, in what they are going through and let them work it out for themselves because the most valuable thing that you can give them in addition to your love and for being that beacon of hope, for being that lighthouse the most wonderful thing that you can give them is something that you have already, which is faith. You have faith in who they are. And by standing solidly by your faith in who they are, that will rub off on them. That will get them to begin to believe in themselves. And one day, it may not be now, and it may not be in the next couple of weeks, but one day, because you have that faith, they will also develop that faith in themselves. Capricorns have a wonderful response. You know, whenever they're being called to dinner or, you know, can you come downstairs right now or it's time for us to leave, Capricorns always say, coming! And they still are working on the thing that they're working on. Okay, so someone can be like, we're running late, come on, Capricorn. And Capricorn's like, on the way! just have to finish what I'm working on this computer first, or I just have to finish sending this text message, or I just have to finish paying this bill. Capricorns think that they have all the time in the world. And it's a natural human instinct to think that you have all the time in the world. And it comes from a tendency to put off for tomorrow what you can do today. Or in the case of Capricorns, to see the thing that they need to finish as being the most important thing in the world. And once they're done with it, then they're free to go and join everyone else. But this idea of putting off till tomorrow what can be done today, this idea of perhaps keeping people waiting, this idea that you have all the time in the world to go about and see that old friend or to write that book or to write that song, or you have all the time in the world to get to a place in your life where you can finally relax, maybe you accomplish the thing that you needed to accomplish, or you scale that towering mountain of achievement, and now I can relax. Capricorns are always telling themselves, one day I will get to this place when I can relax. One day I will meet 
together again with my old friend. One day, and it's coming soon, I'm going to take that project or secret endeavor off the shelf and work on it. The wonderful gift that Aries has to give Capricorn right now, especially fueled by the energy of the solar eclipse, is urgency and immediacy. Okay. Aries energy, when it comes coursing through your horoscope this week, it will bring this sense of urgency and immediacy. And it will say to you, Capricorn, make that phone call, commit to that project, take that rest if you need to take that rest. Okay. Don't put things off to the future. You need to do it now. This Aries energy will get you to act now so that you don't regret having not acted later. Aquarians never cease to amaze me with their ability to step outside a moment and to review the situation remotely. When they talk about taking a bird's eye view of things, when I think of an Aquarius, I think of taking a satellite's eye view of things. They can distance themselves that greatly from a situation, and they can examine it without being involved or drawn into it. This is going to be very important for you, Aquarius, this week, with the solar eclipse taking place in the zodiac sign of Aries and coursing through everyone's horoscopes, because everyone's horoscopes will be filled with an urgency, an immediacy. We have to do something right now. And what this is going to manifest in your life this week as a bunch of chicken littles racing around you, screeching and crying out, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. So whatever the crisis or whatever the difficulty, people who you thought you could rely on may be unreliable because they're acting hysterically with what's taking place. So what's going on? It looks like you may be facing a financial predicament where someone who promised to deliver reneges last minute. And so this is going to lead perhaps a business situation or a financial deal or a sale or a purchase in the lurch, where once again, everyone is running around, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Now, the stars show this week that you'll be able to remedy the situation. One of the reasons you'll be able to remedy the situation is that this is not a surprise to you. Uh, you've been reading the signals for weeks, and you had a kind of suspicion in the back of your mind that things might suddenly go south, or at the very least, be delayed. So you're going to be ready with a solution or at least a series of action steps that you'll be able to direct others to go ahead and do. And so what that means is that you'll be able to salvage the situation, but that still leaves a lingering problem. And that lingering problem is, how do we set ourselves up so that this situation doesn't happen again? Thankfully, you were born under the zodiac sign of Aquarius. And Aquarius is very much a future thinker. The idea of foresight is an idea that's often associated to Aquarius. And that foresight, that ability to see things further down the road, is going to be accelerated by the Aries energy that is flooding through your horoscope. The other thing that you're going to get as a result of the Aries energy flooding through your horoscope is the courage to go ahead and say, okay, we took care of the situation. It's great that we took the care of this situation, but let's do a pause. Let's do a stop here and let's think about what we can do to ensure that a situation like this doesn't happen again. You need to have the fortitude and the courage to get them to see beyond this crisis to crisis living and to look at what may be a long term plan. The Aries will give you the courage of your conviction to go ahead and do that. But what Aries will also do as an energy is get you to exercise the clout that you have as a result of your success. Because you took care of this situation where uh, someone didn't deliver as promised and you got everyone through the dire straits, this gives you clout. This gives you cred. And so what the Aries is going to do in the weeks ahead is get you to exercise that so that you're less of the observer or the person standing outside the situation 
and a little bit more of the reformer, the person stepping forward and saying, I've identified where um, our problems were, and I've identified exactly what we can do to make sure that this doesn't happen again. The big question for Pisces is, is someone deliberately trying to thwart you, or does it just feel that way? This is a big question that you're going to be asking yourself this week, as Mars, the planet of action, forms a conjunction to Saturn, the planet of in action, in your own zodiac sign of Pisces. You will be feeling like you have to act on something, but at the same time, you'll be feeling like this isn't the right time and that you should hold back. And so you'll want to push to act, and then you'll want to restrain, and then you can see where this is going to go. This is what you will be feeling very powerfully this week, because both planets are going to be conjunct in your zodiac sign. Now, Pisces tends to see the world synchronistically. In other words, you often feel like what's going on in the inside is taking place on the outside. And this is one of the things that makes you so psychic because you're used to this magical view of life. You know, you're used to feeling like this is what's going on with my unconscious or deep inside. And, what's, and I see it reflected or mirrored in the outside world. And what is that connection? This is what Pisces will ask. What is that connection? And what does it mean? Is this a reflection on my psychological state? Or is this uh, trying to tell me something? Is being thwarted or challenged in some way trying to tell me something or even trying to teach me something? But sometimes, sometimes when you have this view of the world uh, where you feel like everything is very connected to you, and you're very connected to everything around you, it can become a bit paralyzing. It can become this like, well, if I brought this on myself, then maybe I need to edit out that feeling or, or uh, subvert it in some way uh, so that this doesn't take place outside. Uh, so you begin sort of controlling or policing your own psyche. You may be saying, well, I didn't believe in it. And it's because I didn't believe in this situation that it turned out abysmally. Or I was very angry at this person. And oh no, it was wrong for me to have been angry at this person because look at what happened to this person. This person, you know, got involved in a, in a very difficult situation. And it's a result of my having been angry at them that somehow that turned into something that had an effect in their life. Sometimes when we get kind of tied up in a knot like this, about our own inner uh, experience of life and the uh, being reflected in the outside experience of life. As I said, you can begin to edit or censor yourself. And so where you may be feeling uh, or, or wondering, is someone really out to thwart you? Is someone really out to give you a hard time? Or are you making it up in your head? Are you just imagining it? Pisces can go and have these conversations for hours on end. That's why I find that the best thing to do is to ask, is to simply go up to that person that you feel is thwarting you or doesn't even like you for some reason, to go up and ask them if this is true. Now, part of you might be like, aghast, it's such an idea. I mean, what a bold move. How could I possibly do that? But this solar eclipse in Aries that uh, is taking place on April 8th is giving you that kind of push that thrust in your Mars energy, and it is coursing through your horoscope, that part of you is going to feel very emboldened about doing it. And another part of you is going to feel like, well, why shouldn't I do it? I need to get to the truth of what's going on here. So let yourself be Aries in this moment. Let yourself walk up to that person that you think is thwarting you and ask them, are you thwarting me? Do you have something against me? Um, are you deliberately trying to make trouble for me? Ask them, maybe confrontationally, maybe more pleasantly, but ask them because chances are this week, this person's going to answer you. They're going to go and tell you what they are feeling. And in that moment, believe it or not, there can be a moment of release because then you can decide for yourself, is this something that I want to put up with? Or is this something that I could happily live without? If you enjoyed what you saw, please press the like button. 
that helps more than you know. If you could subscribe, that would be wonderful. I've had such a wonderful time visiting with you this week, and I can't wait to get together next time on Christopher Renstrom Astrology.